guys, for today's video, I'm doing finishing childhood art kits part three. Basically, this started when I did my art room makeover. When I was going through that junk, we found tons of art kits that I never finished as a kid. No, I never finished it. Wow. So that's how this series started. Let me go get the art kits that I never finished. Oh, don't, don't drop. Let me just give you a quick overview of all of the options we have here. This is a paintable lamp. This is a friendship bracelet kit. Two Care Bear paintables. A bedazzling kit, a beginner's stitching kit, a felt uh, marker thing, rainbow loom, stained glass painting things, and paint by number. Art kit number one will be the lamp. Okay, so this is a creativity for kids art kit. The kit comes with various materials to decorate the lamp. We have some yarn, not enough paint, a light bulb, and some fabric glue, as well as the actual lamp. I took out some blue masking tape that matches the background perfectly. And now we're ready for some paints. These are my neon paints that I just got. Each of these colors are really bright and vibrant. I also mixed together an aquamarine color with some white to make a light aquamarine color that we will use later. First, we're painting the lampshade. Because this paint is neon, it is very bright. So bright, in fact, that some might even say the paint is glowing. The art kit itself actually had groovy ceramic lamp written on the front of it, and that made me think of lava lamps. For those of you who don't know what a lava lamp is, well, it's it's a lamp filled with glowing liquid. So you turn your lamp on and there's some colorful liquid in it that's floating around and looks quite slimy. So I decided to have lava lamp liquid drip down the sides of the lampshade. After painting the first coat of the neon paint and kind of figuring out where I wanted the drips to be, I took out my aquamarine paint. <laughs> I decided to use this color for the background of the lamp. So you might be asking yourself, hey, Marissa, why didn't you paint your blue background before you put the drips? And while I will admit that usually I will not have a very good answer for these kinds of questions, this time is different. I intentionally put the drips first because the neon paint is actually transparent and you really need to paint it on a white background so that it can be as bright as possible. I used the transparent nature to this paint to my advantage and created a glowing outline as well as some shading to make the drips look very three-dimensional. I also took a lighter version of each color and added it to the center of each of the drips. This step was actually a little annoying because I already felt like I blended everything out and then I felt like I had to do it again, so. Although this step was admittedly pretty time consuming, I think it did increase the quality of the painting and it really made these drips look more like glowing lava lamp drips. I took out my white paint pen and added some highlights to each of the drips. Here's what the top of the lamp looks like so far. And now we're ready to add a protective coating to the lamp. Guys, I opened the lid and this had dried on top of it. I love it. It felt like slime basically and was really stretchy. So I pulled it until it broke. This is my favorite. After that, I added the decoupage to the lampshade. If you don't know what decoupage is, it's the same as Mod Podge. Once that had dried, I took out the pink yarn. The fabric glue had dried out, surprise, surprise. But I had some hot glue that I used instead. <laughs> While I'm hot gluing the yarn on, I'd like to briefly call your attention to the shriveled up part of the lampshade. <laughs> the paint did not do well there. The other parts of the shade did not shrivel, which was nice, but yeah, that one edge was very wrinkly. I added my signature and now the lampshade is done. Let's move on to the bottom of the lamp. Here is the first coat going on. Beautiful, beautiful, ah. 
So you'll notice I decided to paint the whole lamp blue, dry it off, before I really had a plan. I took out my planning sketchbook to come up with an idea for what I would actually be painting on the bottom part of the lamp. I'm a big fan of derpy faces, so I thought it would be funny if we had little balls of lava poking each other. I sketched these characters on the bottom of the lamp and then also painted white on each of the areas so that the neon transparent paint would really shine through brightly. Up first, the liquid we decided to paint was pink and then orange and then yellow and then green. I went in rainbow order, okay? So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I'm just noticing this now, but I think I forgot to do the ombre on yellow and green. All the other lava people have ombres. I truly have no explanation for you other than I wish I realized sooner. After that, I added cute little smiley faces to each of these lava people. They're poking each other, which I just find hilarious. They're each just like, touch. I also added little glimmers to their eyes. Usually I don't do that for this kind of face, but I thought it looked cute on this one. Lastly, I took out my gloss decoupage and coated the whole lamp with it. Added the light, added the lamp shade to the lamp, and here's what the final thing turned out looking like. Now I have painted a lamp before, and last time you guys were a little upset I did not turn the lamp on. I turned this one on and Gosh, I wish I hadn't. It really doesn't look good when it's turned on. This one does actually look good turned on. I just forgot to film it last time. So here it is for the people that asked. And here are both of my lamps together. Let's move on to the next art kit. All right, next art kit is going to be... We gotta do Rainbow Loom. I'm not very good at Rainbow Loom, I'll be honest. At the very least, I know I can make a bracelet. Let's do it. Okay, so taking out what is actually my sister Alina's Rainbow Loom kit, she is the one that used to use this. I bought this extra kit because I needed this thing to try to do it. I've definitely used Rainbow Loom before, but I just never remember liking it that much. I decided to try on all of the bracelets that my sister Alina made in the past. Nice job, Lena. I decided to start off easy and try this bracelet, which I have a direct tutorial for. I was following it, I thought I was doing a good job, but I quickly realized that I had no idea what I was doing. I don't know how to do this. So I asked my sister Alina for some help. What am I doing? I'm confused what step you're on. I was on this step. Oh, you're on step one. <laughs> I was looking at it upside down. You take this one. Like that? How do, I don't even know how I just did that. Correct. With Alina's guidance, I continued onward trying to make my bracelet. Spoiler alert, it did not go very well. At the very least, I know I can make a bracelet. Everything fell apart, so Alina had her foot on the table, I don't know why. This is my third attempt, and I asked my sister Alina for help one more time. What's this supposed to be? Oh. I can't do this! Rainbow Loom is the worst! Okay, so this is what I ended up with for the bracelet. I decided to just leave it as is, tie a knot, and put it on my wrist just like this. So this is what I ended up with, and I'm gonna try now to make an animal. For this Rainbow Loom attempt, I decided to follow a video tutorial. And I have to say, the video helped so much, and this went so much better. I'm putting things on random holes. I am going to link the tutorial that I actually watched because this is nearly impossible to follow. I'm not positive I did it 100% correctly, but I tried my absolute best. Those are the eyes that I just put on, those black things right there. And I'm taking off what is now going to be the head to a duck. I'm stuffing the head, adding a beak. Do not ask me how I did this. I was really just intently watching a video tutorial and trying my best not to mess it up because I had such a terrible experience with the bracelet. As I'm sure you can probably tell, the duck went so much better. I stuffed it in the butt right there. <laughs> and then here it is. I mean, that looks like a duck. Don't get it twisted. I definitely hate Rainbow Loom after this experience, but I mean, that, that kind of looks like a duck. Uh, maybe a little bit of an ugly duckling, but it's better than I thought he would be.
I had so much fun testing out these childhood art kits, and I hope you guys liked the video as much as I did. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye! Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have a quick update on Chip and Cherry. Their ears are now connected. They have yet to comment on what this means for their relationship.